Right. Should you believe a male victim of domestic violence? In order to answer this question, I'm going to share with you my personal experiences. All right. And I'm also going to... Uh, in fact, I'm going to start by talking about what you see on your screen right now, which is... Um, I prepared this um, screenshot from the page from a web, web page belonging to Time magazine. The quote is very instructive. We cannot argue that biology should not keep women from being soldiers while treating women as fragile and harmless in domestic battles. Well, what that's supposed to say, in essence, is that in one breath, we seem society seems to be saying that what a man can do, a woman can do better, and therefore we push for women to be involved in every area of endeavor, including the one that involves challenging men physically. In sports, we want to say women and men are no different and women can compete equally with men. In other words, we are implying that women have the capacity to generate and put to use the same volumes, if not more, of testosterone and other masculine attributes that will enable them to have an edge over even the man in maybe competition, in situations of danger, war, risk-taking and all of that. And in the same breath, we are also saying that women are too fragile and too harmless to do any damage in domestic battles on the home front. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. We, like, we, we need to make up our minds. Are women as tough as men and capable of doing what a man can do? Or are they not? So the story of Hope Solo, this um, goalkeeper for the US gold medal winning soccer team, who went on a bit of a violent outburst and attacked her sister and 17-year-old nephew, is a case... In point and in the same article there's a reference to Beyonce Knowles' uh, sister Solange when she attacked her brother-in-law uh, Jay-Z in a notorious uh, it was a kind of um, an incident that happened in the lift or right, in an elevator and the, the, the news was or it was a viral video that went all, all over the web you know that was something that proved that a woman could actually get extremely violence against a man and there are so many research based examples in fact there's a lot of research to show that women are capable of it but for some reason, society doesn't want to accept it. So I'm going to offer you some ideas of how you can check and verify whether or not to believe a male victim of domestic violence. So, I mean, should you believe a person who claims, a man who claims he's been abused by his partner and been a victim of violence at the hands of an intimate female partner? Um, it's, it's a big debate. It always comes up. Um, as a person who has uh, been declared a male survivor of domestic violence, as, I think as far back as 2018, that was when I spoke at Muson Center, I was invited to the speaker shell hall by the domestic and sexual violence response team. I think they are now called the domestic and sexual violence response agency. Um, what I've found out is that, um, I mean, I know I'm one of very few men who has had the courage to come out and say anything about the kind of abuse I was subjected to. In my own case, what I went through lasted for, I would say out of the 20 years I was with my partner, I would say at least 12 to 13 years of that period, I experienced direct, mostly physical abuse, apart from emotional and psychological, that was on another level. Now, what I'm saying is this, the question about the believability of my claims always came up every single place I went. Now, you must understand, when it began, I did not go to a report. This is what happens to me. In fact, like it has been said by many, um, I've read a lot of stuff on this over the last 12 years, and I will tell you this. It has been confirmed, and I think most of you listening to me, you know this, that many times when a man is going through abuse, sometimes he doesn't even know he's been abused because he's been made to see himself in society as to be some kind of um, mach macho guy. Um, he's supposed to be like kind of a hero, strong guy, nothing ever can affect you. So he doesn't even feel he needs to show he's vulnerable, but internally he may be suffering, but he keeps it to himself. That's one. Two, the other thing is that he doesn't even know he doesn't know where to go. There are no help. You don't have any shelters for me. You don't have any support lines. Not in Nigeria anyway. I don't know about other parts of Africa. Um, in the Republic, I've not really heard of domestic violence. It's not something that occurs with the kind of frequency it does in Nigeria. It does occur, but just not much. And then, and then again, over there, they don't have much tolerance for it. And they do have a system generally for dealing with, for dealing with aggressiveness, you know, violence. You know, they don't tolerate it. You know, compared to Nigeria where it's more like it's, it's almost a way of life here. So again, the guy doesn't know where to go. There's no support system available. Then the third thing is, even where he doesn't know where to go, or where he thinks he should go somewhere, and he goes and makes a report, and that has happened. We have lots of Nigerian men who have gone out to make complaints about abuse. <laughs> you find that many of them don't have good experiences. In fact, all over the world, men who choose to reach out for help, by, or even to go and complain, 
about abuse at the hands of a female partner, an intimate female partner, quite often end up getting labeled as the abuser. In my case, my persistence is what helped me to emerge at the top, as it were, um, of awareness of people's consciousness and people began to give me kind of benefit of doubt over time. It wasn't overnight. It took me years and years of persistence. I mean, relentless persistence. And in the series of videos I'm publishing on this theme, should you believe a male victim of domestic violence? Okay, that's the theme of this series of videos. This is the intro to it. Um, you are going to be seeing where I pick up all kinds of evidence available online, produced by research bodies, media professionals, experts in these psychologies and all of that, internationally and locally in Nigeria. And you will see that there's a mountain of evidence that support the fact that men can be victims of violence. And let me make it very clear. What I'm talking about is not the one where the woman is acting in self-defense. Let's be clear. I'm not talking about that now. I'm talking of a battered man. What is the definition of a battered man? You're going to see it when I launch every every video in this series. I'm going to put that definition. It wasn't me that came up with the definition. It's actually by a researcher and she's internationally recognized for this. She and her partner. And I can't remember her name now. I'll put that up in the next video. But she talks about the, the, the battered man as being the one who has been on the receiving end of abuse, violence in form of physical, emotional, psychological um, um, channels and was not in any way involved in inflicting violence or abuse on the female partner. In other words, so it wasn't a case of he was beating her and then she beat him back and then he got injured. No, 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 no. Which is what people have tried to insinuate in many of the cases where I, where I reported myself, my, my partner initially. But later on, many of them, by the time they saw the, the, the series of um, evidence I could provide, the police reports, uh, photos, videos, I have a mountain of material, audio recordings on uh, a cloud storage channel because I had to start keeping my stuff on the cloud storage channel when she began to, when she, it was clear to me she was going to continue uh, attacking me to destroy evidence. So for instance, she once took my phone where she had recorded videos of where she had poured a mixture of excreta and, and urine on the floor in the house and that was the second time she was doing it and I said I'm going to report you for this and I recorded the video. I somehow I forgot the video on the, the phone on the windowsill. She took it and ran away. For eight days I didn't see her. By the time she returned that phone, it was not only badly damaged in terms of battery um, storage capacity, it had also had all its content deleted by way of videos and audios. She made sure of that before she returned it to me. So that's now the, the, the thing I want to say is in closing. Those are the instances that make it difficult. Those are the, that's the scenario that makes it very difficult for the male victim to even find help or feel like reaching out for help. You understand? But um, I think what we need to remember is that that male victim could be your son, it could be your brother, it could be your uncle, it could be any male person you have love for, that you care about. And the person, just think about it before you jump to take sides with a woman and say, oh, he must have done something wrong to her, he must have instigated, he must have provoked her. What if he didn't? What if this was your brother telling you, uh, sister, you know, you know what I've been going through in the last one year, you know, it's been terrible. She's been doing everything. And this is your own brother, your blood brother. What if it's your son telling you this? Oh, look what I've been going through. Would you then tell him, ah, no, you're a man. You must have been there. You must have done something to her. What you did to her. What you... When it is your son, when it is someone you love, it is always easy to then look at the other side. Ah, you might be telling the truth though. Women are like that. In fact, human beings are like that. But women in particular, this us against them philosophy you practice. It's dangerous because he can hurt you. You have a son now, he's growing up. How old is he? Maybe he's five years old. But one day he'll be a man. Then he's going to be subject to the same rules you're applying to men now. One woman will look at him and say, yes, you must have done something to her for her to pour hot water on you. That's what was said to me. Oh God, what did you do? What did you do to her? What if I didn't do anything? What if I never said any harsh words to her? What if I never raised a hand to her? Do you know that in 20 years, this woman, I never once never once instigated any attack against her. Not to speak violently to her, but that's not just the only thing. She never had to report me anywhere for violence. Never. Never once. Never once. Do you know we went to the police station where she was locked up for 24 hours? Or like, let's say 18 hours after she injured me on my arm. It was a policewoman 
who investigated the matter and said she should be detained for 24 hours and had the Yes. So let me, without further ado, I have some guests in, in the building today uh, that uh, we would also want to honor, but thank God that they are living and they are people who have gone through and uh, would want to share their story briefly. So uh, first, they say ladies first, we have Mrs. Olaide Kayot Yomoshebi. Yes, that is my wife. Uh, we have um, Mr. Tayo Sholabade here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, we have Mr. Wale Ibiduni, who is Mr. Tayo's uncle, who came to give us some moral support. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning sir. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, firstly, I would want to...